Hello, my name is Eivind Isaksen. I'm the CEO of uh, Polite. Polite is a company which has developed a tuner optics since 2005. We have a product uh, launched for some years ago called T-Lens, which is a tunable lens, which is basically mimicking the, the function of the human eye. We address different market segments, um, uh, consumer, AR, MR, and industrial. And that's um, one of the markets uh, we are addressing. And one of our customers is here with me today, uh, Paul Travis. He's the president and CEO of uh, Visix Corporation. They are even more senior than us. They have been there since 97, so basically a veteran. Um, Visix is an optical technology company, pioneering augmented reality technology, and is a leading provider of smart glasses for enterprise and consumer application. Paul, thanks for uh, joining me today. I've been, it's a, it's a pleasure. We're happy to be here today. Uh, you're right, we have a long history in this space, so it'll be fun to share our perspective of where we're going and plans for the future and how important what Polite's doing to help support that. Super. So this is exactly, I, I'm going to ask Paul to spend Paul to spend a few minutes with me talking about uh, how he sees the augmented reality market trending, the key challenges facing the development of AR smart glasses, such as Visic Shield, and the value of tunable optics technology, I hope, like Polite, brings to the use experience of its RGB autofocus camera. So let's uh, move on to the, um, a, a few questions, uh, Paul. Um, your company is recognized as a leader. You basically are a veteran in, in the Waveguard optical technology with a long successful history advancing augmented reality in a wide variety of devices. From your perspective, uh, Paul, where do you see the AR market going in the next, say, five years? Well, let me take a step back and give you just a little bit of history to fill in the last since 97, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. We have been at this for a long time. I think we are probably the only company on the planet Earth that is still in the wearable tech space and hasn't had challenges along the way of, of actually quitting and then coming back later. So we have been consistently being in this space. We actually started in 93 or 92. We made the world's first virtual reality headset for the broad markets, consumer markets. It was a product called the VFX1. And I bought that company out and started Vuzix. So mm -hmm. we've seen we've seen everything. We know that if it's big and if it's bulky, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be an experience that will work for the for the map for the world mass market enterprise or otherwise. And not to throw anybody under the bus, but to just to give some simple examples, companies like Microsoft with the HoloLens, Magic Leap with their ODG, uh, excuse me, with their Magic Leap uh, one and two, I guess is what they're called. These things are big. You really can't work with them all day long in an enterprise application. Can you imagine work, working in a warehouse, picking parts, wearing you know something that's that big and bulky it's just untenable so what we've learned over the years is it's got to be small it's got to be lightweight they have to be trim they have to be all day wearable you can't look like you just stepped off the starship enterprise mm -hmm. so to make all that happen you have to have technology that will disappear and what <laughs> polite's doing with your optics allows the camera systems to get very small mm -hmm. and and i can see in the future they're even going to get smaller with the efforts that you guys are doing if you think about what goes into a pair of glasses, there's all kinds of sensors and cameras and display systems that need the kind of optics that Polite's making that can shrink these systems down. Because ultimately, the glasses are going to be the size first of the smartwatch industry, which is right now 300 million on an annual basis. But ultimately, it's going to take the place of the phone. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have a hard time with that. But Talk to Zuckerberg, look at their vision around AI, look what Google's doing with AI, look what everybody is doing. AI is going to drive these glasses and make them so you'll be able to do things that you just cannot do any other way. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, when's the last time you used a paper map? You don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today, people hold their phone in front of them. When you can ask your AI engine in the glasses to give you the directions to the hotel or the restaurant, and it just comes up in your glasses, you're not taking your phone out of your pocket. You mm -hmm. will not use your phone again. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be glasses. But the key is they gotta be fashion forward. They can't look like you just stepped out the subject enterprise. Mm -hmm. And to make that work, you need optical systems that are really advanced. Mm -hmm. Conventional glass formed optics, polished, Injection molded, they're big, they're bulky, the optics are slow. 
Uh, that's not the case with what Paul Light's doing. <laughs> Super interesting. You said that you had your first product in, did you say back in 92 or 93? That's correct. And if you look up, you can see there's a company called Forte Technologies. That was my company that I bought out all the outside shareholders from. And the product was called the VFX1. And that was the beginning of V6, or? It was the, it was, yes, it was. And this product was a VR headset that would flip the visor up in the front. And it had uh, Sony or Sanyo displays that are in their camcorders were built into this thing. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was beautiful. It even had a controller you could shoot the bad guys with. So we, we have a lot of experience and that was big and bulky. I will say we sold $6 million worth in our first quarter. We had over a hundred titles that worked with it, but you can tell by today's standards, it's, you know, it's 28, 29 years later, there's been a, a lot of changes in the industry and it's been taking its time to get there, unfortunately, but you know, it takes time for technology like pole light to be developed. So. We feel that very strongly. Yes, absolutely. The the um, the you mentioned that it has to be has to be wearable. It has to be easy to wear. It has to be light. It has to be yeah easy to wear and 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 to be a kind of an all day wear tool. Um, in that context, where do you see where is the biggest challenge to make it so wearable for all day? Where is the biggest challenge? Is there? Well, one is in the display optics themselves. Yeah. And Usix makes waveguides. And these waveguides literally are like the lens of my glasses here. And what's in our shield, there's a pair of these waveguides. Mm -hmm. And we can make those in high volume. But when, when you put that together with the camera systems that look out on the real world, you know, the camera systems have to be small and lightweight also. So we mm -hmm. have glasses, there's display engines, there's the camera sensors themselves. Currently, pole light is a big part of our camera sensor systems, the stuff that looks out in the real world. And that those things are being used for remote support. Um, they need very fast response times to read barcodes and the likes, and they have to have a lightweight profile, a small profile, and a low power profile. And the technology that pole light builds delivers on all those accounts. Exactly. This is one of, one of the kind of... Uh, that's why Polite feels that the AR market is really a sweet spot for our technology. It's uh, nothing which is comparable to when it comes to power consumption, the speed. And in a way, the natural way of focusing, you, you feel it's so smooth, it's so fast. So so you, you, you kind of confirm that, that th those are important characteristics for, for an AR application. Compared to a mechanical system, yeah. a galvanometer, trying to whack around some mechanical components and stuff. It's just, uh, it's a beautiful design, what you guys have done. Yeah, super. Um, the, the um, yeah, as we know, the the, the uh, people watching this video now understand that uh, Polite T-Lens inside, is inside in the Visic Shield, which is some very nice glasses. The, the Visic Shield are using basically two RGB cameras, front-facing RGB cameras, which both have the AF solution from um, Polite and, and Paul, you already mentioned it uh, um, that that the benefits this gives for 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 the product. Have you what is the customer saying? Um, yes. is, do they understand and appreciate that kind of technology and that function? Unfortunately, they don't know Polite Pol very well, right? Because <laughs> you're inside the product and but what they do know is the performance of the cameras and how well they work at barcode scanning and how good a job they do on remote support applications and the filming quality and all we get is compliments on how good that is so i've been i nothing but nothing but yeah this works really well so it, it's in the right spot it works well for us and I'm confident you will see your technology in lots of music's products going forward. Yeah, super. Well, you know, that's make me sleep uh, nicely, uh, those words, Paul, and I know you mean it. I know I've seen you, I've seen your product, I've used your product. I was, uh, this year, CS, I was using them, and now we have bought two, two units, which we show to our customers and partners. So so I'm really hoping that that uh, sale will go well for the, the Visic Shield. I'm glad to hear that your engineers and your customer have recognized the, the benefits we, we bring to the table. Um, 
and obviously we hope that we have a long future together for also other products um so so this is uh, this is something which i said in the beginning a key market segment for polite and I, and i really really uh, and references for polite is super important we brag about it all the time paul we mention your name we we show the glasses uh, we demo them so in a way we are your extended sales activity uh, sales arm um in here in in uh, worldwide and in europe so um Anyway, Paul, uh, I know it's Friday. It's a, it's a busy day for you. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, it's an impressive thing you have uh, developed over the years. And, and I would say that to having the patience of building a company over so many years, I've done it um, not for, for 20 or 30 years like you have, uh, but I've been in Polite for 10 years. And I know all the fights, all the hard work, which has to go into it. And in addition to talking to uh, one of your customers on a Friday day, it's, it's so much appreciated. I'm really looking forward to the cooperation, Paul. I mean, it, it, again, it's my, it's my pleasure to be here. We really do appreciate the kudos and to be a reference platform for you guys to point to, which is awesome. I'm super excited about some of the other stuff that you guys have in the hopper coming too. So uh, we look forward to the future with Paul White. And what Paul is then talking about is the, what we call TVETCH, which is the resolution enhancement for, for AL display. That's a really good example, right? Yeah. You got to get four times the display or you can keep it small and multiply up the pixels magically. It's, it's a beautiful design. Super. Thanks a lot, Paul. You're welcome, Ivan.